Another thing that we can take great advantage of in engineering mechanics problems is the concept of thinness. So let me start with this simple sort of theoretical uh, setup here. Suppose I have a function f of x and I am looking at the value of f of x between two points a and b. So I'm going to only consider points x between a and b. And what I can do is I can actually assume that the function is constant if I have a couple of uh, properties in my system. Number one is if, if the range that I'm looking at is small relative to the mean value of the range, and by small I mean by at least a factor of 10, and I know that the rate of change of f is small, then I'm very well justified in assuming that the function is constant over this range. And it seems relatively abstract, but this actually turns out to be a really uh, nice and important uh, observation that allows us to solve a number of problems in engineering mechanics. So let's go ahead and, and look at one where this is really quite useful. And this is the problem of determining the st stress state of pressure vessels, and in particular thin wall pressure vessels. So let's assume that I have a, a cylindrical uh, pressure vessel with caps on the ends, and it has a radius of capital R, and the wall thickness is T. And R over T we're going to assume to be greater than 10. So I'm going to have thinness across the cross-sectional walls of the pressure vessel. And if I look at it in, in, in the cross-sectional view, as shown over here, you can kind of see that a little bit better. So I'm assuming that R is much, much greater than T. Okay. Now, due to thinness, what I can do is I get to assume that certain things are constant over this cross-section here. And in particular, I'm going to go ahead and assume that the strains are constants as a function of R. So as I move out in the radial direction, I'll assume that the strains are constant across the cross-section here. And also because of symmetry of the problem, I also know that nothing can be a function of theta because I can always rotate this picture around the axis of the pressure vessel and that's, that should not change the state of stress in the system. So these two things allow me to actually do a full analysis of this system. So, and the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to make a, a section cut first through the vessel and then look at one end of it. And I'm going to take advantage of my constancy assumption of the strains, which also means that I'm ending up with stresses that are constant across the cross section. So if I draw that free body diagram associated with that section cut, I have some stresses here which will be sigma zz, so they're normal stresses in the z direction, acting in the material, so those are shown in green. And then I have the pressure of the gas, p, uh, acting across the center of my section cut. So if I want, I can look at force balance in the z direction. So, and because the stresses are constant, the force associated with the stresses is just the stress times the area. And I approximate that as 2 pi rt uh, because of the thinness. Technically, there's an integral there. And then the pressure is pushing back in the other direction over an area of pi r squared. So I can solve that relationship there for this, the stress in the axial direction. I get pr over 2t. And so that's a very simple result. I found out what the stress state is inside this pressure vessel simply by taking advantage of thinness and assuming constancy across the, uh, the walls of the pressure vessel there. Now that's one of the stresses in the system. Uh, I can also look at the hoop stress by making a section, second section cut over here, uh, a distance L away from my first section cut. And so if I redraw that, I have this figure down here. And acting on the section cut here, I have sigma theta theta, and I have the pressure P. And so I can do some of the forces in the direction orthogonal to that section cut. And so I'll have sigma theta theta acts over the area L over T on the bottom side here, and L over T on the top side here. And then the area over which the pressure acts is just L times the diameter, which is 2R. And since I don't have to worry too much about the finesse of this because I'm assuming that T is small. And so if I can solve this for the hoop stress and find out the hoop stress is PR over T. So with just a little bit of careful assumptions, one can come to a solution to the uh, state of stress inside the pressure vessel. Now there's one other important stress in the pressure vessel and that's the radial stress. And on the inner wall, the radial stress is minus P because you're pushing out on the wall. And on the outer wall, it's free, and so the stress there is equal to zero. Now, we're making the thinness assumption, so we're assuming the strains and thus the stresses are constant through the thickness. 
of the walls and so I had to pick a number so I could pick minus P I could pick 0 I could pick minus P over 2 there are lots of options but notice that they're all options in magnitude whose values in magnitude are less than P and the other two stresses in the problem the axial and the hoop stresses are P times R over T but R over T is a big number so in relationship to the hoop and the axial stress the radial stress really doesn't seem to matter too much and so the conventional assumption is to assume that the radial stress is equal to zero and that's really based on this issue of the fat or the thinness assumption for the pressure vessel so this is a classical example of using thinness to uh, determine the stress state inside some kind of mechanical system and it all starts with this assumption that the strains are constants as, as a function of radial position through the wall thickness. The other common pressure vessel case is the spherical pressure vessel. So you have a sphere, a radius R, and it has wall thickness T. And again, you we make this thinness assumption, namely that the radial uh, diameter of the pressure vessel in relationship to the wall thickness is greater than 10. That allows us to assume that the strains are constant as a function of R through the thickness of the pressure vessel. So R is now sort of the spherical distance out from the origin. Uh, and that allows us then to observe that the stresses are constants as a function of R in the system. So we can make some section cuts and do a similar analysis. So if I make a horizontal cut in the system, I find the spherical stress sigma phi phi uh, acting on the section cut and I have the pressure P acting downward on that section cut and so I can sum the forces in the Z direction uh, noting the areas that Sigma Phi Phi acts over and that the pressure is acting over the area of pi R squared I can solve this now for Sigma Phi Phi and I find that Sigma Phi Phi is equal to PR over 2T so that's a nice result it's also it's the same as the axial stress result we had for the closed uh, cylindrical pressure vessel if I make uh, a vertical section cut through the sphere, I'll expose sigma theta theta, so the hoop stress, and I find out the sigma theta theta is also equal to PR over 2T. So we get the exact same result. And the only remaining stress in this problem that can be possibly non-zero is the radial stress, and we'll make the same conventional assumption that we did with the cylindrical vessel, namely that it's equal to zero, because it's minus P, uh, the internal pressure in the system, uh, on the inner walls so the, we have the pressure in here in the pressure vessel and so it's going to push against this wall with minus P and then on the f outside wall it's free so it's zero there so we pick as a value between minus P and zero we pick zero by convention because the other two important stresses in the problem are much larger because they depend on this ratio of R over T